We can fix this, she said. Don't worry, we can glue it back together. In the early dawn of 5.30 a.m. on that Saturday morning, tears pricked behind my eyes as I assessed the damage. Hundreds of tiny red plastic pieces twinkled back at me. I wiped my face and wailed, we can't glue it back together. Look at all these pieces, it's completely shattered. My sister and I were spending the night at Rosemary's house while my parents were out of town. I had just received my license and was backing our family's Dodge Grand minivan out of the driveway on my way to the 6 a.m. shift at the local vet's office. I backed that van down the driveway and directly into a fire hydrant, a good eight feet from the driveway. <laughs> I shattered that taillight completely. Rosemary in her threadbare terry cloth robe and dog chewed slippers skittered around the driveway, gathering pieces of taillight and stashing them in the pockets of her robe. My parents are going to kill me, I cried. My mom won't ever let me drive again. You know how she is. She's going to ground me and she's going to yell. I started to sob when she turned to me, placed her hands on my shaking shoulders and said, Sarah, now stop this. Go on to work. It's just a taillight. We're going to work this out. I dreaded the phone call I knew I'd have to make after work. Rosemary was ready for me when I got home, sat me at her kitchen table in front of a plate of her signature extra crispy oatmeal cookies and told me she'd tell my parents she did it. Oh, I thought about taking her up on that, I did. But no, I couldn't let this 75-year-old woman take the fall for my mistake. So I told her thanks, but no thanks. I'll just have to face the wrath of my parents on this one. She nodded, squeezed my hand, and dialed my mom. When my mom picked up, she said, now listen, Sarah's going to tell you something, and I don't want any yelling. <laughs> she handed the phone to me with a nod, and I confessed to that taillight. My mom did get pretty mad, and she made me pay for it. It was $78, more than I made at work that morning. Rosemary is my grandma, my mother's mother. I never call her grandma or grandmother or Grammy or anything like that. She's just always been Rosemary. That's what everyone calls her. And when people saw me around town, I was Rosemary's granddaughter, and I'd smile with pride. In school, I wrote my name as Sarah R. Gatsos, and I'd go back in and edit my byline at the student newspaper to include that R. That R stuck so strongly that at my 10-year high school reunion, my classmates greeted me as Sarah R. Clearly, I was the only child with such an affinity for her middle name. And when asked about it, I promptly answer, it's my grandmother's name. In middle school, I was inducted into the National Junior Honor Society. The school made a big deal with a ceremony and a reception. My parents couldn't come, so I asked Rosemary to come as my guest. And she came. She came dressed in her smart Kelly Green pantsuit and her signature hot pink Revlon lipstick. She had no clue what National Junior Honor Society was all about, but she proudly sat in the front row and clapped loudly when the principal called for Sarah R. Gatsos. Rosemary doesn't wear holiday sweaters. She's not part of the knitting circle of grannies. She believes computers are a passing fad, <laughs> but she does like Ricky Martin. She owns a pair of Purple Vogue reading glasses. Ice cream is an acceptable breakfast food at her house. She worked at L.O. Bean well into her 80s. And when she took me shopping for school clothes, she selected her own pair of jeans from the junior section at Macy's, complete with rhinestones on the rear pockets. I learned more cuss words from Rosemary than I did all year riding the bus in seventh grade. She attended a college at a time when not many women did. She was a nurse. She spent much of her adult life living in Central America for my grandfather's job. Not bad for a woman born in Hicksville, Ohio. In college, she called me on my phone in my dorm room at 6 a.m. on the morning of my birthday, my very first birthday away from home. She asked me if I was talking to her at the phone at the end of the hall. And she was the only one who ever sent me care packages. One time, I received a pair of orange socks, floss, and M&Ms in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> I'm talking about Rosemary in the present tense, but she's not really here anymore. 
Dementia set in, ate her judgment, her short-term memory. She lives in assisted living. She complains about the old people she has to live with. <laughs> She's worried that the lack of snow means we won't have water to drink. She can tell me when all the men left a fight for World War II, but she doesn't remember that taillight. But I remember. I don't own anything of Rosemary's. One of those estate specialists came and sold the miscellany pieces of her life. And then we sold her home. While I don't hold the physical, tangible pieces that make up her life in my hands, I carry those memories in my heart. And I remember, I am Rosemary's granddaughter. I have a daughter. She'll be four in June. And her name is Kate. Kate Susan. Susie, 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 she screams as my mother's car pulls in the driveway. Kate ignores my calls to slow down as she races out towards my mother the two of them embracing as if they don't see each other at least once a week. Kate squeezes her tiny arms around my mother's neck, and I feel a pang in my heart for the woman who helped me collect caterpillars, play hooky from preschool, and whose name I carry. I am Rosemary's granddaughter. <laughs>